Welcome back, everybody. This time we're going to talk about another sorting algorithm, and this will be the last one we discuss before we move on to data structures, which I'll talk a little bit more about at the end of this video. Uh, but counting sort is a way to sort a list of numbers without comparing them to each other. And you might think, well, that sounds impossible, but stick around and let's discuss how we might do that. Okay, so let's say we want to sort this input array ARR. It has 16 elements indexed from 0 to 15, and we're going to use counting sort uh, to sort this out. The way you would do that is first you would find out the maximum value of this input array. In this uh, case, it's 18. And then you create a temporary array, we'll call it count, and it will be of size uh, maximum value of array, which is 18, plus 1. So count will be of size 19 with indexes from 0 to 18. Then uh, what you want to do is iterating through the array, the input array, what you're going to look for is for each element, you're going to increase the value at the index of count that is showing at the current index of the input array. If that makes uh, very little sense to you, just take a look at the graphic here, and we start with the uh, index 0 of input array, and we have 5. So then what you'll do is you go to the count array, which I've, which I've highlighted uh, index 5 there, and you'll increment it. That becomes 1, and you move to the next number, 10. Then you go to the 10th index and count and increment that. Then you go to 2 and then you increment 2 down in the count array. You go to 12 is the next value in the input array. You increment that corresponding index in count. And then you get 5 again, so now at index 5 of count you have 2 because twice that number has shown up. And so on. So I'm going to speed this up because I believe you get the idea. Uh, the count array keeps track of how many times each value in the input array appears. When, that get, when that's completed, you should now have the counts of each value in count array. And next, you're going to go from index 0 to the end of the count array and modify that array by adding each immediately previous element. So for example, count 1 will be the sum of count 0 and count 1. Then you go to count 2, and that becomes the sum of count 1 and count 2, and so on. This is an illustration here, so I've highlighted the first two elements, 3 and 0, so count 1 becomes 3, because 3 plus 0 is 3. Next I have 3 and 3, so count 2 becomes 6. Then I have 6 and 1, so count 3 becomes 7. Then I have 7 and 1, and count 4 becomes 8. You proceed in this way until you get to the end of the, the until you get to the end of the array, and then what you have, once you've done that, is count contains the number of elements in array, the input array, that are less than or equal to the index. So for example, count 18 equals 16. That means there are 16 elements in the input array that are less than or equal to 18. And it also means that, for example, if you look at count 4, that equals 8. What that means is the elements in array, the input, are less than or equal to 4. Um, there are 8 of those. And we can see right here, those are 0, 0, 0, 2, 2, 2, 3, 4. Indeed, there are 8. So everything is working as it should here in terms of defining how many numbers are less than or equal to a given number in the count array. <clears throat> in, excuse me, in the input array, are, are showing now in the count array. Once, we've com once we're done with the, uh, the count array, what we want to do is create an output to hold the sorted array. So I've created this array here called output, indexed from 0 to 15, obviously, because that's the same size as the input array. And uh, you'll start at the end of this with the index j equals 15. And the way this works is the algorithm of counting sort, you're going to go backwards from the size of the array minus 1 to index 0, and uh, array j here equals 18. Then what you look at from there is check out the count array at that index. So count 18 is 16. 
So what that tells you is you need to ch modify the output at that value minus one because that's also indexed from, you know, zero-based indexing. So output at the count array minus one is the output at count 18 minus one, which is the output at counts, uh, or the output at 16 minus one, which is equal to the output at 15, and you assign to it array j, which is 18. So in effect, this will place the number 18 from the input array at its proper position in the output array, as we see here. Once that you've placed that number where it belongs in the output array, you'll decrement the count in the, uh, in the uh, count array. So 16 now becomes 15, and then you'll decrement j. So j is now 14. And you repeat this process. So array j is now 4, and the count at 4, in other words, the count at array j is equal to 8. Then you find the um, output at count 4 minus 1, which is output at 8 minus 1. That gives you output 7, and you uh, change that, you make that equal whatever array j is at the time, which is 4. Again, you decrement the count in array j, now that's 7 in count 4, and you decrement j, and j is now 13. And then you have array j is equal to 8, count of array j, which is count of 8, is equal to 11. Then the output at that 11 minus 10, or 11 minus 1, is the output at 10, which you assign to it 8, which is array j. You decrement the count to 9, excuse me, to 10, and then you uh, decrement j, j is now 12. And you have array j now equals 3, and you have count of array j is equal to count of 3, which is 7. And then the output at 6 then becomes 3, which is array j. Again, you decrement count array j, it was 7, and now it's 6. You decrement j, and now it's 11. Next, you have array j is now 2, so count at 2 is 6. And therefore, you set output 5, which is the uh, count of j, uh, count of array j minus 1. Again, that's because of zero-based indexing. And then that equals output 5, which was assigned to it uh, array j, which is 2. Then you decrement the count in array j, and that becomes uh, 5. And it was 6, and now it's 5. You decrement j again, and again you have 2. And this illustrates why you're decrementing the count array, because now observe here, j is 10, and array j is 2, and count array j becomes count of 2, which is 5. It was previously 6. Now that's very important, because, you know, watch this. What we want to do is set the output of array j minus 1, which count of 2 is now 5, and then you subtract 1, and then it tells you to put at output 4 the number 2. And that's why we're decrementing count, so that if there are um, multiple numbers of the same kind, there's room for that. Um, if we didn't decrement the count array, you would be uh, writing over numbers in the array when you shouldn't. And then this continues in this way until j equals negative 1, at which point the loop will terminate and the output will be, um, will contain, the array output will contain this complete sorted array. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, please go back and watch this part of the video if it doesn't, so you have a good understanding before we write the algorithm. And so uh, let's, uh, once you have that, let's proceed to the next step and, and consider how we might write this more formally into an algorithm and then after that into code.
All right, so let's write this algorithm out formally, uh, the process that we just went through. So I'm going to call it counting sort, and it's going to take three uh, parameters in as a it's going to take an input array I'm going to call it in an output array to hold the sorted output and then the maximum value of the of the input array now we we could just take the input array as the only argument and get the and figure the rest of this out within the algorithm but to focus on the actual procedure I'm going to take all three so it's, we're not bothering with creating those things in the uh, in the algorithm itself all right so uh, what you'll do is um, first thing you're going to do is uh, create the count array and you're going to initialize every element to zero as we explained in the in the uh, previous part of this video so I'm going to say for i equals uh, zero to the maximum value uh, do a count array and that's going to create a count array here of i and set it equal to each element equal to zero. So that creates the count array and it's of size uh, the maximum value plus one. So if the size, uh, or, or I'm sorry, the, the maximum value in the array was 18, this array will be of size 19 from zero to 18 indexed that way as we showed in the example. So then you're going to take um, i equals zero to the length of the input array minus one I think that's a capital I and you're gonna do the count arrays input at J that's going to be uh, incremented so remember this is where um, basically you're, you're finding the count of each number in the input array. So if there were two twos, eventually index two of the count array should be incremented to two. Uh, you know, just very, uh, to put it simply. Next, we want to augment the uh, count array by adding the, each uh, previous element to the current element, starting with element one. So now you're going from one to max on the count array, and you're doing count i is going to be incremented. So it's going to uh, it's going to be augmented by taking the count of the previous element plus the current element, as we showed in the example. And then finally, we get around to. Um, traversing the uh, input array backwards so we're going from the length of the array minus one to zero down to the beginning and what we're going to do is take the output array and take its index at the count arrays input of j that might look a little confusing but remember uh, that we went through this in the um, in the example minus one and that's going to be assigned the input array at j and then you're going to decrement the uh, the counting array at that position Oops, there should be a uh, bracket there. All right, so now we have the full algorithm, and we're going to go implement this in Python. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to create this uh, program in Python, and I've opened up PyCharm, and you can use your editor of choice. But uh, I'm going to start with defining a main function, and then from there we're going to write the uh, uh, code based on the algorithm we define. So I'm going to say define main... And here I'm going to give, create a random sort of array of numbers. Okay, so I have an array here that we're going to use to test. And then I'm going to say I need the max element. And that's going to equal the, the maximum of the array. 
and I'm, I'm going to have to uh, convert it to int because the maximum um, will not provide you an int. Uh, so you have to convert it using the int there. And I'm going to say output array is going to be, uh, initially, it's going to be 0 for i in range the length of the input array. So that'll just create the same size array as the input, but the inputs will all be 0, or the elements will all be 0, which is what we want for the initial output array. Then I'm going to say print original array is and then to create a printout of that array I'm just gonna say string array so this converts the array to a string and then the answer is going to be count sort that's what we're gonna call this count sort array output array remember we're taking three parameters and max element and we've got the red squiggly there because we haven't defined count sort yet. And then remember, if we want to run this, we have to write name equals main, then run main. And so now we're ready at the top of our file to create the functionality of count sort based on the algorithm we wrote. I'm going to say count sort array out maximum and that's just what we'll call the inputs the parameters so what we'll do here is if you if you look down at main it shows that count sort is being we're passing it the input array arr the output array uh, which is a bunch of zeros right at this point and then the maximum element of this input array which will be you know 91 And so we go ahead in here, remember, we have to create a temporary array of count, and this is going to be a bunch of zeros, but for i in range maximum plus 1. So if we have the maximum number of uh, elements to be, not, if, if the maximum is 91 in the input array, then this will go from 0 to 92, uh, That because when you define a range, the numbers will range all the way up to the number you provide, maximum, minus 1. Um, so if you provide the range 5, it'll only go to 4 because of the way indexes work. It'll go from 0 to 91 with 92 elements. That's what we want in count. Now that once we have that, I'm going to say for i in range uh, the length of array, I want the count of array i to equal the count of array i plus 1. So what this does is for, remember, count has all zeros. And basically, we're saying, as we showed in the example uh, before writing the code here, that um, increment the, uh, at the, increment the value at the index given by the uh, values in the array, in the input array. So for if the input array at index 0 is 5, then we go to the count array's index 5 and increment it. So this keeps track of how many values there are in the array um, of, a, of a given magnitude. And then I'm going to say for i in range now 1 to the maximum plus 1. So this will go from 1 to 92, uh, basically. <clears throat> or 1 to 91, sorry. Um, what you'll do is... Um, count i is going to be the sum of the the two numbers, the previous and the current. So this should be familiar based on the example we ran. And finally, we're going to iterate backwards. And in Python, there's a slick way of doing that. You can say reversed 
array j. I'm sorry, we need a range in there. Reversed range, length of array. And then you're going to go out the count array j. minus one equals array j. So this will now, um, in the output array, will find where the each number in the input array is supposed to be located and place it there. And when you're done at each iteration, you're going to take the uh, count array at that index and decrement it. Finally, we need to return the uh, value, and the value in this case is an entire array. So I'm going to say return out, and that should um, get rid of all the errors, and um, uh, this should work, actually. I'm not seeing where there's any issue. We implemented exactly what we wrote in the algorithm uh, with, the, um, uh, with the correct indexes, hopefully. Um, so let's run it. So I'm going to go to run main. And it didn't print anything. Let's see what happened. Oh, I forgot to actually tell it to print something in the end. All right, so I'm going to go down here. And uh, I'm going to type print sorted array is. and then string answer. Okay, I think the file is properly formatted and we have a print statement in there. And let's run it again. And it's not printing anything. I wonder what's wrong. And this is a good teaching moment because you might have um, you might think you've thought everything out, but there's always a reason why you'll have to debug something. So let's pause here and figure it out. I'm not exactly sure what the problem was, but um, I went ahead and made some improvements uh, while I fixed this. It, it ended up working with the original code, um, so it might just be a glitch. But one of the things I did was create the, count, the array of zeros for count using this syntax the zero element times the number of times that element happens, which is maximum plus one. I did the same thing down here with the output array. It's just a bunch of zeros. Python allows you to do that in this shorthand, which is, which is very nice. All right, so let's try it again. So I go to run, and there we have it. We have the original input array, and then we have the sorted array down there. And it looks like it's sorted, 0, 0, 2, 3, and so on, all the way to 91. All right, congratulations. You've, um, you've now uh, experienced how you would create a, uh, a sorting uh, process that doesn't require comparing each element to, e to each other element. Uh, you might not have thought it possible, but, but this, is how, this is one way of doing that. This is one type of counting or non-counting sorting algorithm. Excuse me, this is one type of uh, non-comparison sorting algorithm. And with this, we're pretty much done looking at sorting algorithms because I want to get to other things. We're going to start looking at data structures uh, and combining them with algorithms to do more interesting things. So let's go back and conclude and carry this forward. Well, congratulations, you just finished uh, counting sort. That was a little bit involved, I know, and I hope the, uh, the visuals were very helpful in understanding how counting sort works. And I think we'll be done with sorting for a while. Uh, right now we're going to, uh, or in the next video, we're going to switch gears and start looking at data structures more formally. We were looking at the array data structure, and we've been using that pretty much exclusively for all kinds of things. But now, in the next video, we're going to look at something called a linked list. And linked lists uh, come in a couple of varieties. There are singly linked lists, there are doubly linked lists, and we'll talk about the differences. But one interesting uh, feature of a linked list that you don't have with an array 
is their dynamic in a sense. An array must be declared to be of some size when you initiate the array, when you instantiate it. Uh, but with a linked list, it can grow in size or shrink as you add and remove nodes as they're called. So we're gonna, in the next video, we're gonna implement a singly linked list. We're gonna describe what that is first, but we're gonna implement it in Java and then Python. I hope you join me there. This will open up a whole range of other possibilities, including uh, trees and heaps uh, and other kinds of data structures, which you may have heard. Uh, and we'll discuss all of those in the coming videos. So I hope you join me next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.